What's up everybody, this is Craig and this is day 28 of my 30 day video challenge. In this video, you will be learning three steps to create a sustainable workflow. We'll look at what is a workflow, important questions to ask before optimizing your workflow, and the three steps in creating a sustainable workflow. As creators, sometimes we begin our work in not the most efficient or healthy manner. It's important as creators that we answer the question, how do we keep going? More specifically, we look at our current practices, how we go about creating work, and how we can create a sustainable workflow. So you may be thinking, what is a creative workflow? Or more specifically, what is a workflow? At a high level, you can think of a workflow as a series of repeatable steps. Anytime we create an article, a podcast, or a video, we stitch together several smaller workflows to create that piece of content. So for example, take a YouTube video and the process that you go through to create a YouTube video. You may have a series of steps, like one might be come up with the idea, two might be research a title in YouTube, third might be to work on a script, and fourth might be thumbnail. Now, they may be in different order, but those might be some steps that you take to create a YouTube video. And each one of those steps has a series of steps within itself in order to complete the task. So if, we come, if we're working on coming up with an idea, that process of coming up with an idea may have a series of steps that goes into it. Each of these stages has an associated workflow with it. So now that we have a better understanding what a workflow is, let's look at some of the questions we should ask before optimizing our workflow. So perhaps the first question that we should ask is, should I outsource the process? Yes, you heard that right. I said, should I outsource the process? We should consider this because if the process is outside of your skill set and you can afford to hire an expert to do this, then maybe the process is best handled by someone else. The next part of answering whether we should outsource the process is to look at the time required versus the cost to outsource. If budget is a concern, then maybe it does warrant optimization. Let's consider the next question. Does this process warrant optimization? As an overthinker, I tend to sometimes go down rabbit holes. Oftentimes I might find myself optimizing a process that really doesn't warrant spending the time on it. And what I mean by this is optimizing workflows is not always the wisest move. Something that helps me when I'm looking at workflows and whether it warrants spending more time getting this workflow right is I try to ask myself a question of, will I be doing this process for less than a week, maybe a week to a month, or one month or more. If the answer is less than a week, then it's probably not worth the time and effort to optimize the process. If my answer is more than a week, but less than a month, you may have to kind of gauge how much, you may have to gauge how much time it will take to optimize. Then last, if the answer is greater than a month, then it possibly warrants optimization. It really depends on, on what you're doing and what you can afford to invest as far as optimization. That often leads me to my next question, which is what does optimization do for me, my cause, etc.? Why do this? Now that we've considered the cost of outsourcing and whether or not it warrants optimization, let's look at what optimization means for me. And by me, I could mean my company, my organization, whatever group I'm working with. So let's just take a simple example and say, if we can shave off or if we can save 15 minutes or more off of this process, what can we do with the time saved? This really helps answer the question of whether it's worth optimizing the process. So I did the math and if we save 15 minutes per each time we do this process and, we, and let's say we do this process four times per day, and we do this process three days per week, and let's just say we work 50 weeks per year, meaning we get two weeks vacation, 
This means we save 150 hours per year. And if we're working eight hour days, this would mean that we would save 18.75 work days. Ask yourself, what could you do or accomplish with at least 18 days of extra work? I know for me, that would be huge to have 18 days back. We've kind of asked the right questions. We've kind of determined that it is worth optimizing. And now we want to know how do we optimize our process? So here are the three steps to building a sustainable creative workflow. Step one is identify your steps. So we have to figure out what has to be done. This may sound simple, but really people fail to ask this a lot. I know this because I forget to ask this myself. What is involved in the process? What steps have to be taken to take you from this, the start, to the end? Two is optimize the steps. How can I do this better, smarter, etc.? Three is review your process. Is what we're doing, is what we're doing now the best way to do this process? So these steps may sound a little bit simple, but I know for me that if I make it overly complicated, I'm less likely to complete the steps. So let's go over them one more time. So first is we're going to identify your steps. What does it take from A to Z to complete the process? Two, we're going to optimize the steps. We're going to look at each of the steps and see how can we do this better? How can we do this smarter? So we're gonna take a deep dive on the steps and try to optimize at least part or all of our steps. Three, we're gonna review our process. As you're doing this process, you may set aside some time each month to review your process and see what things might need to be changed. And then we're gonna repeat. Uh, you're gonna probably have to do the creative work a few times before this process is really gonna become clear. If it's making a podcast, you're going to have to make a few episodes of that podcast before you know all the steps well enough to ask questions like, how do we optimize those steps? You know, if you're making a YouTube video, you don't want to do this on your first time and try to optimize the steps when you've never made a video. So you may have to complete this process a few times before this, before you can create a sustainable workflow. What I think you will find is that as you iterate and go through your creative process and then you spend time reviewing, you will find ways to optimize the things that you're doing and you'll get better and better and better at your process until it's a lot smoother. 